So family, um, if you're visiting, um, welcome, welcome this morning. It's good to have you in the house today. Um, this, this, um, this theme, unshakable hope, is um, <coughs> it's been good because there are a lot of things that I guess God is already showing me, but then there's a lot of things still to learn. You know, and um, and I love that. That's how it makes you humble. You know, if you think you know it all. Um, be ready to be humbled <laughs> um, because God is not finished. You know, he's not finished. If he's giving you something already, he's about to give you something else that you may not have understood or may not have known before. Um, it was cool. I, I got to some, <laughs> there is the theme, but I'm, I, I was just thinking about this game changer. Um, I know I mentioned it a lot, but um. There's these things in our life or these people in our life, they just, they're like game changers to us. You know, there's the normal game that you play and then you add this person in and the game is changed. You know, there's these people, like I remember back in high school, even primary school, you have these people who, um, you know, if they're picking a sports team and you know you can't, you know, you're not good at sports and then there's this guy that's on your team, you're like, yes. We're definitely going to win because he's on our team. See, the game just changed, you know? Um, or you have um, these, these um, what I would call nerdy guys, you know? They're real smart. <laughs> Amen, you know? Um, <laughs> they may not wear glasses, but they're smart, you know? And then when they're on your team, you're like, yes, we're going to win because that guy is in our team. Yeah. Um, and it was funny because I was praying this morning and I was thinking about these game changes. And then I, I remember something back in high school that made me laugh in the car. Um, we were told to do this project. And, um, and it was funny as because the teacher said, you have to build a bridge. And then we're going <laughs> to yeah, get over it. And then we'd, um, <laughs> but it had to be solid. You know, and he was going to put something heavy on it to test. I don't know if it was like a science thing or some sort of um, experiment they were doing. So I, I was poor. Like, you know, so I was like, how am I going to build a bridge when I don't have any materials? <laughs> so I was laughing this morning because I remember going to an old drawer that was broken. See, because like that thing kept falling off and I just kept putting it on. So when people come, it looks like a cupboard, but really it was falling apart. There was no closing it. And so I took that front piece of the drawer and I took the, the handle off. And then, um, see, if you're like me, back in the days, we had like eight track, you know, cassette tapes, not this DVD, the CD stuff. So we had these eight tracks, these plastic hard covers that were going to be the base of my <laughs> bridge. <laughs> So I had old jewelry seal and I covered that A track. You know, it was nice and shiny, and then I sellotaped it to the front of the drawer. That's all I have for a bridge. <laughs> so I turn up to school and then I see these other kids. They come out with like this Golden Gate Bridge building thing that they made with wires and stuff. And I was like, so I was like, man, I don't want to do it. I don't care if I get an F today. I'm not bringing my bridge hook, so this is embarrassing. And so the teacher calls me up, and he's like, bring your bridge. And I'm like walking up like this. <laughs> Put it on the table, and he's like, let me test it. And all the kids come around. I was like, no. They're going to know this is from a drawer. They're going to know this is got an A-track as the base. And they put it on, and it was, it was funny. But every time we had like a like a, a science project. Us naughty boys, we'd always hang around these smart kids. Yo, yo, my team, we're gonna do this project together. <laughs> and, then the, and, then the, and then the teacher's like, here's the theme. And we're like, yes, do whatever he says. Because he knows, like, you just know that they have a passion in this area. You know that they have expertise in this area because you've seen their grades. You've seen the A's on the projects. They make you volcanoes out of paper mache and painted, and you're bringing a volcano made from a rugby thing that, you know, you kick the ball with. <laughs> the T, yes, thank you, terminology. And it's, um, it's these game changers, these people that you have in your life that you just know if they're on your team, man, you, you're going to win. You're going to win. Like if we're going to go out and see, today we're going to go out and evangelize. I'll look for the crazy 
craziest bunch in here who love to talk to people and say, you're on my team, you're on my team. People will get saved. We're going to come. I'll pray for you while you're praying for them. I'll get them, you know? <laughs> but let's just imagine if there was an event called the Championship Free-Legged Race. Come on, my brother. Come on, man. I always use this guy because he's right. The access to him is just like he's right here. But I, like, I mean, just, just imagine that. Like, there was an event called the Three-Legged Championship Race. There's a 5% chance that we will win if he's strapped to my leg. <laughs> but there's a 95% chance that if I fall, I will break his leg. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not really a game changer, it's a life changer because he might be in a wheelchair, but... It's these game changers, these people that are almost in your life, if you think about it, they give you a sense of reassurance, of security. They give you this, I know I can't lose if I have these people. In my corner. Because they're so passionate. They're so good at what they do. Now, I don't know if you realize this in the scripture. There's Romans 8. And this is a theme for this week. This, there's a promise that God wants us to have. And I, I'm so privileged to bring this word because I felt like it was preached to me before I preached it to you. So I can't take any recognition for any of this. But the scriptures in Romans 8.34... Christ Jesus, talking about Christ Jesus, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. I know about you, but that is a game changer for me. God, Jesus, is at the right hand of God interceding for us. How many of you have heard this or come across the scripture? Yeah, come on. Yep, that's awesome. I see your hands. See your hands. Praise the Lord. See, having knowledge of this doesn't make it powerful. It's understanding it. That's what makes this promise powerful. See, it's, it's great to have head knowledge, but you gotta have heart knowledge. This thing has to be part of you. This thing you need to know and have a revelation. Say, God, give me a revelation of this so that I can be part of my walk. If you look at the word intercede, I, I, I know the word prayer, but I see this word intercede. He lives to intercede for us. It means to plead. It means to make petitions, to stand in the gap, to intervene with passion, and it is specific. So Jesus lives at the right hand of God, interceding for us. That is passionate, that is specific, especially to you. Now, I also want us to be careful because as I was doing my research about this, there are, there are Christian blogs out there that might be like seem real good. At the same time, it may take away from what Jesus has already done. Because I read some things and I was like, this doesn't make sense. There are people saying that Jesus is is making petitions on our behalf and he's pleading on our behalf to the Father. Like he's begging the Father. And I look at it and say, this doesn't sound right. It's because it's the will of God. It was God's plan to send his one and only son. It almost makes it look like Jesus is the good son and the Father is the bad one. But that's not the case. Jesus is making this plea on behalf of us because we're here. We have an enemy. See, when I, when I first became a Christian and, um, and I started to understand some things and God started teaching me some things and, I, you know, uh, it's amazing what he does when you don't deserve it. But I was cool because I, I had this idea that now that I'm a Christian, things are going to change. Like, I had this idea that, man, my marriage was going to be amazing. You know, my wife is going to be, yes, Captain. What do you want, Captain? I'm hungry. Like, what do you want to eat today, Captain? You know, like, <laughs> I just had this idea that it was going to be perfect. I had this idea that my kids were going to be little angels, you know? When you go shopping, they're just like, Daddy, 
I don't want anything. You know? I thought they were going to be little angels. Instead, it was almost like they were little fallen angels. Yeah, I thought that I was going to go into work and I have this big boss that would just look at me and say, that looks like a child of the king right there. And he was going to treat me differently. But it didn't happen down that way. You know, I had this thing that I thought my family was going to see. Hey, he used to be the black sheep. Now he's the white sheep. Let's follow him because he's following Jesus. But they look at you and go, hmm, going through that phase, eh? <laughs> now I used to think that I had this idea that I thought favor was just going to fall into my lap. And I was going to have blessings upon blessings coming at some. That's what I thought. I had this idea. You know, I thought that uh, every mall that I go to, there was going to be a car park that God put aside for me right in the, in the front of the entrance. But somebody has to park at the back. And it's always me. <laughs> this is the idea that I had. But see, the scripture says that the same storms come to those who build their house on the rock. And the same storms come to those who build their house on the sand. The same storms. Here's what I came to realize. We as Christians are not exempt from these storms. The storms come to us too. But we have a game changer. That's what's changed. Think about it for a sec. Jesus who was born, who came down from heaven. Shouldn't God have made a way for Jesus to be born in the hotel suite of the day. Shouldn't God have protected Jesus and put a bu bubble around him to make it storm proof? Shouldn't God have protected him from them speaking lies and gossiping and slandering him and betraying him and the same person who was about to die for them, the same ones laughing at him? Shouldn't God have protected that? Shouldn't he have made it storm proof? But he doesn't for Jesus. I see, that's why I praise God, because I praise God, because Jesus is the one that's in my corner, and that's the one that I want to have. Yeah. It's one that understands us, one that gets us, one who was born just like us, who had to grow in the favor of God, who had to grow in the grace of God, who had to grow just like us. That's the one I want to have in my corner. That's the one who's interceding for us. He gets you. The glory, glorious one of heaven came into a crazy world, but he overcame it. Please, church, I understand that life happens. I understand that we have real emotions and the things that we go through. But please don't let us speak louder than Jesus. Life will always speak. But let it be silent by the word of Jesus over your life. So I praise God that he didn't remove the storms from Jesus' life because it gives me great comfort that the one who intercedes for me is the one that understands us. Luke twenty two thirty one 31. It's a story of Jesus where he's, he's coming up to the time where he has to Give us life. And he's praying. He's praying in the garden with his disciples. Luke twenty two thirty one 31 says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat, but I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. It's just mind-blowing for me because I'm like, Jesus, you could have you told him how it was going to go down. You could have told him that he was, you, you know, he's about to betray you. You could have told him how it was going to happen, when it was going to happen, how it all plays out. But he didn't tell him that. He said, Simon, I am praying for you that your faith may not fail. The storms of life come to all of us. 
But we can't let us speak louder than Jesus. Please don't. Because I'll tell you what, man. The word that Jesus has for your life will lift you up and put you into a better place than the life that you're thinking you have right now. I guarantee it. I'm grateful that God hasn't removed the storms of my life. I know, I know it stinks at the time when you go through it. You don't go through it and go, oh, thank you, God, that I'm going through this storm. I love it. <laughs> Nobody has that attitude. Come on, man. I'll be honest. But I praise God that I went through those storms and the storms never stop. Because in those storms is where God reveals what he wants to get out of you. Sometimes when he puts you in leadership and you don't want to be in leadership, all of a sudden this pride starts coming up. God said that pride was already there. I just, I put something there in order for it to come out so we can get rid of that. Because I want you to have humility. See, we, we, we don't want these storms. But these storms are strategic. They're to get out. What was there all that time, we just didn't know it. It sat there dormant. You didn't know that you had fears. The things that affected us in their life, like not trusting people, they were there. All of a sudden, the stuff started coming out, and we hate it. But guess what? God is building. He's, he's refining. He's bringing the gold, and he's bringing the rubbish to the top. And he says, that's what I want you to address. Come on, let's do it together. Let me do it. Praise God for these. Sometimes you might go into a year and say, man, look how faithless I was in this year. Man, I spent this whole year faithless. But sometimes you don't realize you come out of that year, maybe feeling like that, but you see a year of God's faithfulness. Even when I am faithless, God always reveals himself as faithful. But let me tell you, even in these storms, man, the devil loves to play in these storms. Because he loves to accuse us. He loves to tempt us in these storms. Why don't you just give up? If God hasn't turned up yet, he's not going to turn up. I thought you were a child of the king. It's in God's place to turn up right now. But he hasn't. It happened to Job in the Bible, if you, if you know the book of Job. He said to him, the only reason why these people praise you and love you is because of the things that you give them. He accuses God. These people don't love you. They just love what you give. You're not a God to them. You're a genie. You're an ATM. Cash in all the time. Never give back. He loved to accuse us. But as the Bible says, he accuses the brethren day and night. Because he hates it that we are made in the image of God. Every day that you wake up and you walk in the image of God, he hates your guts. Because you remind him of what he lost. So if you want to know why he's so angry, keep walking in what God has called you to be. Because he lost his chance. Anybody can praise God. When everything's great. But how about in the midst of the storm? I believe that's what Jesus is trying to teach us. Is when the storm comes, we know who's praying for us. And that should change the game for all of us. Hebrews 7.24 is just like Romans. Jesus lives forever. He has a permanent priesthood. Therefore, he is able. Everybody say it with me. He is able. Come on. He is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. Can I ask you some questions? How many of you know that Jesus is praying for you when you're in your storm? Some of us. That's cool. That's what I love about the subject because I was starting to learn something real good. I felt like there was some treasure right here and I need this for my walk. I didn't have a message <laughs> to begin with up till yesterday. And it struck me. Hey, Jesus, 
you'll pray for me, which means that I'm going to get a message. Woo-hoo, this is awesome. It's comforting to know that. Man, I know what it's like to feel like your marriage is falling apart. I do. I know what it's like to stand in the checkout line with 20 bucks to your name thinking, how am I going to make this spread for the week? I know what it's like to feel sick to your stomach that your eviction notice is about to come. I know what it's like to want to change and to transform and to see God's word and not see it manifest in your life. I know what it's like. But I wish I'd known this truth because it didn't stop Jesus from praying for me even though I didn't know. Answers came. Breakthrough came. I tell you what, when I was in the, in the Audi line with 20 bucks, and I'm like, noodles, maybe bacon I can spread over like three days. Maybe I'll just give up eating and the kids can't eat this week. And right then at the end of the line, when I get there, I get a phone call. Hey, guess what? Just at the community center, we have these two baskets that someone's donated. Um, It's full of groceries. Um, Are you able to come pick it up? And I'm like, no way, man. No way. Here's me trying to balance 20 bucks and someone calls for you. It just goes to show that Jesus is praying for you even when you're not praying for yourself. I know what it's like when I'm sitting there going sick to my stomach and, and the rent's not getting paid. And I'm like, Lord, I, 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 I wish I could, I could do something. I, th- I wish I was a better provider. I wish I could have got more jobs. And someone turns up with the rent money. Four weeks of rent money to cover me for that month. Yet I didn't ask. Because to show that, I, even when I wasn't praying for myself, Jesus was praying for me. I wish I knew this truth then I wanted to fall into depression. Because I thought that these storms that I'm going through, I had to take it on by myself. Yet it re- if I realized this, that Jesus was praying for me, it would have changed the game in the way that I walked. I wouldn't be praying like a widow. I would be praying like a son. I wouldn't be praying like an adopted son. I would pray like a bride. Can I ask you some some, some more questions? Does God and all of heaven hear the prayers of Jesus? Does the prayers of Jesus carry power to change and shift mountains in your life? Does Jesus forget to pray for you? Not like we forget something. Where does Jesus live? Could it be that Jesus, who was in the boat with his disciples, and I say that again, who was in the boat, he wasn't watching from the shore. He was actually in the boat with them in the storm. Could it be that whatever boat you're in at the moment, whether it's just staying afloat or it's sinking, that Jesus is in the boat? Could it be that Jesus is screaming on the inside of you saying, don't look at your problems. Look up at me because I'm praying for you. I remember a preach that Damon brought before and he was talking about Jesus and how Jesus smelt like sinners. Why? Because he wasn't in the hotel rooms or the places apart from us. He dwelt amongst us. He walked with us. Can I get someone to can jam it out? I don't need perfection. Just <laughs> come on. I just need a heart that says yes. Strum your heart's desire. I want to tell you something. The storms of life are never going to stop. You thinking that you always come up short is never going to stop. Us making mistakes, it's probably never going to stop. But you know what's life-changing and what changes the game 
is that I walk into tomorrow knowing that Jesus is praying for me. I look into the this weekend coming up with TGIM. Is it is that the right? GTIM? Yeah, whatever it is, man. Marriage retreat. Yeah, let's call it that. Marriage retreat is happening this weekend. And I know that Jesus is praying for them. Right here in this moment, if you feel like God's tugging your heart, Jesus is praying for you right now. You know what I love about right now? In other countries, millions of people are hearing a word from God all at the same split second. How about that, that God is so complex? That everyone who is in a church service is longing for a word from God. And Jesus is speaking to each and every one of them in the same second as we're joining right now. And he's not praying this general prayer, God, would you help them? He's praying a specific prayer for you. Almost like you can hear him say, Simon, Simon, I'm praying for you. Mari, Mari, I'm praying for you. Brett, Brett, I am praying for you. All in the same second, he's praying for you. If there's anything that you catch from this message, is to understand that he ever lives to intercede for you. I'll read that scripture again. If you would dare believe God today, Jesus lives forever. He has a permanent priesthood. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come, through, come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for you. What an amazing God we have. Religion loves a God that is so foreign. Yet Jesus is the only one who came down to our level to be with us, to understand us to love on us and he's the only one that said I ever lived to intercede for you stand to your feet Father we humbly come before you God you Lord who didn't deserve what you went through Father you went through it for us You who are all glorious in heaven, Father, who deserve all the glory, Father. You left all glory to come. And to be born like us and to grow like us, Father. You went through betrayal when you didn't deserve it. You had people leave you when all you did was good. You are a God and a Savior who relates to us. Who understands what we go through. But you're a God who keeps screaming into us that stop looking into your problems. Stop looking at what's wrong. And look what I've made right. Father, I thank you, Lord. It is not based on our goodness. It is your goodness, Lord. It's not based on our performance and perfection. It's based upon your perfection. Father, I pray that that promise would be anyone who is daring to believe today, Father. To walk in tomorrow knowing that Jesus, you pray for us and you are passionate and you are specific and you plead on our behalf. We are not exempt from storms, Lord, but we know who's in the storm with us and that changes everything. Father, we thank you for your awesomeness, your, your mighty hand. We thank you for your grace. And we thank you, Lord that you love us so much beyond our comprehension and how complex you are. Lord, anyone who needs a touch from you this morning, Father, I pray that you would grip their hearts, that you would hold them in your hands and make them so desperate for more of you. We thank you. You're an amazing God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.